In this video, we're going to talk about reference frames used in aviation. We want to do this so we can talk about inertial measurement, so we'll have a little view of over inertial measurement concepts. Then we'll talk about reference frames and the coordinate, coordinate systems that are associated with them. And then we'll talk a little bit about the geometry of the Earth. Next video is where we'll talk about going back and forth between different reference frames. So the whole idea of inertial measurement is to, I mean, to, to measure position, rate of change, things like that, so we can determine an aircraft's uh, or a spacecraft's uh, attitude, position, et cetera, orientation, how fast those are changing. So we'd like to have things like accelerometers uh, uh, or uh, rate gyros to measure uh, rate of change of angular, angular motions and the like. The trouble is, an accelerometer is going to measure acceleration relative to either, uh, you'd like to get acceleration relative to the inertial reference frame where Newton's laws apply, but they're going to, uh, the motion is going to be resolved in the local frame of reference. In the same way with the gyros, uh, uh, it's going to be, the, the motion is, depends on where it's mounted and the directions it has and things like that. So those are some of the issues we're going to have to deal with. Here's an overview picture for the whole thing of these different reference frames we're going to talk about. I'm going to use the mouse to highlight here. We have a, a set of axes with the uh, subscript I uh, of the inertial frame, uh, which does not move. And then relative to that inertial frame, uh, we have what's called the Earth-centered, Earth-fixed frame, uh, which is moving relative to the inertial frame with an angular rate omega sub E, uh, shown up here by the uh, motion around the axes. Both the uh, inertial and the Earth-centered frame share the same uh, ro axis of rotation. And then out here on the surface someplace, or maybe slightly above the surface, we have what's called the northeast down frame, the local tangent frame. Uh, this frame is tangent to the surface of the Earth. The uh, uh, one vector, one reference direction points north, the other points east, and under a right-hand rule uh, of Cartesian coordinates, the third one will point down in that case. But relative to the aircraft itself, there's what we call the body frame, which has a forward direction x-axis, <clears throat> a side direction y-axis, out the right wing, so to speak, and then a z-axis, which is down, again, forming a standard Cartesian coordinate system. We're not showing a sensor uh, 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 coordinate system or reference frame here, but somewhere in the aircraft are the sensors of interest, and they may not be located near the center of gravity of the aircraft, so they may be displaced from that and giving slightly different uh, measurements. The plane may be yawing about its uh, uh, um, axis, uh, and, and that would seem like a certain angular acceleration, yet it may have nothing to do with the overall velocity of the aircraft. We also can specify uh, locations, as we all know, in latitude, longitude, uh, and altitude. Um, I'm calling it height here because mainly we're talking about height above the surface, and there's some issues there which whether, we talk, whether you're talking height and altitude, and we've discussed that previously. But uh, uh, some people will call it lat long altitude, and we'll see that when we get to the MATLAB part. So the Earth-centered inertial uh, uh, reference frame is a reference frame where nothing moves uh, relative to the, to the reference frame. So the Earth may be moving relative to the reference frame, but the point this, which this is defined is stationary, and the reference frame stays the same regardless of what the Earth does. Uh, we're treating it as if the Earth, you know, there's still some issue about the Earth going around the Sun and the like. Uh, so in, in this case, we treat the Earth as static, then the Sun has to go around the Earth by relative motion. In inertial frames, Newton's laws apply, and that's why we need to be concerned about inertial frames. Uh, and Newton's laws largely apply in some other frames, as long as they're not moving too much relative to the inertial frame. So the standard Earth-centered inertial frame, this is widely used, has the uh, uh, x-axis going through the prime meridian at the equator. But you define this thing by, uh, it starts when uh, uh, you say the Earth-centered inertial reference frame is when the uh, uh, x-axis through the prime meridian at the equator is pointed at a star or at uh, the, where the vernal equinox would be or something. And then uh, the z-axis is the axis of rotation of the Earth, of course, and then the y-axis is just chosen to be 90 degrees in front of the uh, uh, x-axis, so there's a 90-degree angle uh, shown in spherical coordinates, so it doesn't look like it's 90 degrees. <clears throat> and so there's a, there's a, a Earth-centered inertial reference frame called the J2000. And the J2000, the, the x-direction points to where the vernal equinox would be in March, uh, on January uh, 1st. So, so where will the Earth be pointing towards the location uh, uh, of that point on 1 January? 
Uh, you can do the same for other dates. Uh, uh, so there's one for January 1950. The Earth-centered Earth-fixed reference frame is fixed relative to the Earth, but not to space. Uh, we know the Earth is rotating relative to the uh, inertial frame now. And so uh, it's the only way that differs from the uh, Earth-centered inertial frame is by that rotation. It rotates you know, about 15 degrees an hour. That's the way we get Twenty-four hour day, so you can see the yellow axes here are the Earth fixed frame. It's fixed relative to the Earth. The Earth, of course, is not fixed in space, uh, so it's good for when you're uh, uh, dealing with the northeast down reference frame. Is what you call a local reference frame, uh, and the level in the northeast down frame will be tangent to the surface at that point. So in a spherical model of the Earth, the down would point towards the center of the Earth, but we're going to see ellipsoid models of the Earth where the down is not necessarily going to point to the center of the Earth. Uh, for aeronautical purposes, we usually use northeast down uh, reference frames. Uh, for nautical purposes also use northeast down, uh, but terrestrial uses often use an east-north up uh, reference frame. So if you're talking about uh, autonomous ground vehicles and the like, or uh, uh, self-driving cars, or even uh, uh, augmented cars uh, that are just communicating their position and the like, they may be using this kind of reference frame. You have to specify where the origin of the local tangent frame is in the uh, Earth-centered Earth, you know, things that are... So now for the aircraft itself, we have what's called the body frame. <clears throat> so the forward direction is through the nose or in the primary forward direction. I mean, if you know, if you don't, not all, not all aircraft are airplanes, but we'll use the airplane as an example. So the forward direction is the x-axis, and you can see that using a right-hand rule, a positive roll angle would be where the right wing of an airplane goes lower than the left wing of an airplane. That's considered a positive direction of roll angle. Uh, the y-axis is going to be out the right wing. It would be, or it would be perpendicular to the x-axis, uh, unlike this uh, uh, aircraft here in the image. And again, the y-axis, by a right-hand rule, a positive direction will correspond to the aircraft pitching up about the y-axis. So a positive pitch up corresponds to a positive roll uh, pitch angle about the y-axis. And then the yaw is going to be by the z-axis, and then again the z-axis points downward in the uh, uh, the body frame using the right-hand rule. And also according to the right-hand rule, a positive uh, direction will be one that moves the nose of the aircraft towards the right. So that's a positive uh, heading angle. Staying close to the earth. Our sensors of interest aren't necessarily located at the center of gravity of, of the aircraft or, or of the ship, as this uh, illustration shows. So here there's a ship, here's the center of gravity, uh, and one uh, um, IMU pack is uh, over here on the uh, right side of the ship and the other is in the, in the fore. Um, and there's a third one here. So all of these are displaced, and if there's any uh, yaw about the z-axis here, uh, then these will measure uh, uh, angular displacements that, um, you know, will depend on the rate of motion here will depend on the moment arm, how far it is from the center of gravity, assuming the ship is turning about the center of gravity. So it's nice if these align with the usual direction of the platform. So uh, if we're trying to uh, measure uh, uh, accelerations in the X, Y, and Z directions of the platform frame or the body frame, it's nice if these are aligned that way. But if they're rotationally displaced, uh, that's not the worst thing in the world. They just You're measuring, you just have to you know work out the resolutions to figure out what the component was in each particular direction, Earth and or not. We also have our ordinary coordinate system of specifying uh, things in navigation of latitude, longitude, and altitude, or height. Again, I'm calling it height here. Altitude, we've t discussed previously, can have a different meaning depending on whether you're talking about pressure altitude or whether you're talking about altitude relative to mean sea level and the like. Uh, 
So there's uh, two ways of specify. At least there's more. There's at least three ways. Only two of them are mentioned here of specifying uh, the angles for latitude and longitude. Uh, one is to use degrees, minutes, and seconds, uh, and the other is to use uh, degrees and minutes, uh, where you've got decimal uh, fractions on the minute. You can also just use uh, degrees with decimal fractions of, of the uh, 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 degree for everything. So uh, that gives us basically a spherical Earth approximation. Uh, and we know the Earth isn't really spherical, and so we need another way of thinking about uh, that. But uh, let's for now look at latitude, longitude, and height uh, here in the uh, spherical Earth approximation. So in that case, one degree of latitude along the prime meridian, or any meridian in fact, corresponds to 60 nautical miles. And that means that one minute of latitude corresponds to one nautical mile. For longitude, the length of a degree or the length of a minute is going to depend on the, uh, uh, the angle of latitude. Uh, and so uh, you have to take the cosine of the angle to get the projection onto the horizontal, uh, the, the uh, equatorial plane here to figure out what the actual uh, length is there. So it's uh, going to depend on the cosine of the latitude. Uh, nautical mile is, uh, 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 there should be an NMI on there, there's a bug. 1,852 meters or 6,076 uh, 6, feet, a little over uh, about 1.15 uh, statute miles, and uh, uh, we know a statute mile feet is 280 feet, 1,609 meters, etc. Radius of the Earth is about 6.3667 kilometers, so uh, and that's about 4,000, a little less than uh, 3960 miles, so effectively 4,000 miles uh, uh, radius of the Earth for uh, very crude purposes, but we're going to need to be less than crude uh, here. Dealing out. Uh, any height would be above the sphere. So the spherical model is not perfect. Uh, the Earth has some uh, flattening. Uh, uh, the poles, the, the polar uh, 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 diameter, the polar radius is less than the equatorial radius, but not by much. So uh, they, we have created, uh, uh, us, meaning the, the human race, has created this uh, World Geodetic System 84, which models the Earth as an ellipsoid of rotation. So here you can see the ellipse and how it's been rotated. It has a semi-major axis of A, a semi-minor axis of B. Uh, those have dimensions of about, uh, uh, A is 3443. 3444 nautical miles and B is 3432 nautical miles so only a difference of about 11 and a half nautical miles there uh, again it's so it's very round uh, we measure how round things are with the uh, parameters called the flattening and the eccentricity there's an eccentricity relative to the major axis and eccentricity relative to the minor axis and both of those are the ratio of the difference of the squares of the axes uh, uh, square root of the difference of the squares divided. So normalized by the one you're interested in. So the first eccentricity is relative to the major axis. You take the square root of a squared minus b squared and then normalize it by a. So uh, that's 0.9966. The flattening is just an overall measure of how big uh, a is relative to b in terms of a. So you subtract b from a. And you can see here that's pretty small, that uh, A and B therefore are fairly close together. And this is often specified as a one over the flattening. <clears throat> Some people specify the uh, ellipse only by the semi-major axis and the flattening. You can drive everything else back from that. So the x-axis of this is through the equatorial plane uh, and through the, in the, in the equatorial plane and through the prime meridian again at the intersection of the equator and the prime meridian. Uh, the y-axis is going to make a right coordinate system, and the z-axis, as we've already stated, is through uh, the poles. You have to use the inertia. Longitude in the uh, WGS 84 is the same as longitude in a spherical model. It's just the angle from wherever you the uh, uh, where the meridian where you are. If you project that down to the uh, equator, the angle that line uh, projected in the equatorial plane makes uh, with the equator, or makes with the uh, uh, prime meridian here, the, the, the x-axis. Latitude is a different story. <clears throat> here we have a, a point, uh, an, an NED uh, uh, frame above the Earth, a height h above, and we can, we can see that the height h is measured perpendicular uh, uh, to the surface of the Earth, and because of the ellipsoid shape of the cross-section of the Earth, the projection down does not intersect the uh, uh, origin as it would uh, in, a, in a spherical system. 
So the longitude is the angle that the normal projected towards the center makes with the equatorial plane. So the uh, latitude phi here is the angle here and is not the same as the angle from the origin to the point of interest, uh, either the point on the surface or the point above the surface. So, I mean, there are other latitudes that uh, are used in geodesy, but uh, we're going to primarily be interested in this one. It's called the geodesic, geodetic uh, latitude. Final frame for th so, we have the uh, Earth-centered Earth initial inertial frame. We have the Earth-centered Earth fixed, which and, we, and both of these can be modeled with the WGS84 ellipsoid, the one we just talked about. Uh, we have the tangent frame with its northeast down axes. Uh, we also could have had the uh, uh, tangent frame with the east up, uh, east north up uh, axes coordinate system. We had the body frame with the x axis along the direction of motion, the y axis perpendicular to that to the right, and the z axis down. We had sensors which uh, were displaced from the body. Um, and then so now we need to talk about how can you go from one reference frame or coordinate system to another, and that's what's in the next video. Things that are outside the Earth and, and where you're trying to deal with, uh, uh, you know, Newton's laws have to apply. So spacecraft and the like need to be worried about inertial frame. The Earth-centered Earth fixed frame can be approximately inertial uh, for a lot of situations. So if you're not moving too fast or too far from your location, you can probably use an Earth-centered Earth fixed frame. Again, the x-axis goes to the prime meridian. Uh, at the equator, the y-axis is 90 degrees in front of that, also through the equatorial plane. And then the z-axis is the same axis of rotation.